welcome back. So today we're going to see how going back to Whitechapel is. I'll be curious to see if it's refilled up with enemies or not, so let's go ahead and start heading that way. Okay, so here we are, so we need to go this way. Kind of going the wrong way. There's a person up there, though. Let's go interview her real quick. Good evening, miss. Good evening, sir. Are you interested in a miraculous cure for this unknown and deadly epidemic? Actually, I am. Then you have come to the right place. The famous Swanborough Cordial is all you need to help keep you in perfect health. Oh, really? Why didn't I hear about it during my studies? I'm Jonathan Reed, by the way. Dr. Jonathan Reed. Ah, oh, my brother has spoken of your research, sir. I'm Loretta Swanborough, and it's always a pleasure to meet a fellow healer. Mm hmm So she's a merchant. Tell me, who intrigues you most in Whitechapel? The region itself is something to see, but I would say Camellia the mute florist who gives away her flowers. What do you think of the locals? Most of them are afraid or desperate. They all come to me eventually for my remedy. Is there anyone I should avoid? Cadogan Bates, without a doubt. The bloody bastard remorselessly exploits poor migrants as soon as they get here. Hmm, okay. I'd Got like some to see what kind of medicine need to get from her. Was that cordial she was talking about? All right. When science fails you, this elixir will give you faith again. All right. Let me see if I can see where I'm at. Okay. Oh, there are three merchants here. Wow. Okay, well, I'll go this way and then turn left. Okay. Turn on our vampire vision. Man, there's a dead line out in the streets all over the place here. Okay, so I want to turn to my left and go up here and then go to the hospital. Okay. where I fought those guys.
Doesn't look like they're below me, so okay, that's good. Human blood. Whoever left these marks did so deliberately. Congratulations, yay me. Well, that was unexpected. I will certainly take it. It's always good to keep an eye out for things. Kill him, boy! Uh oh. Crush the leech, boys! expecting that but I got him so that was good good going Ran to some bosses there okay. unexpected but I got him so that's what matters okay There's that other house I was able to get into earlier. Okay. I'm 
when there's something screaming like a banshee out here. Whoa, I'm gonna just leave him alone. Ah, here we go. Okay. Back here. Let's turn this one in. Let's see if any of these boxes are refilled here. That doesn't appear like it. Okay. She must be outside. I must have walked around her. I would ask you to avert your eyes, sir. Or did you not know it was rude to stare? I knew it. Speak up, Dr. Reed. I like a man who speaks his mind. You killed him. He trusted you. And you killed him. Spare me your sarcasm, Jonathan. You are but newly born in this world. So in the end, the accusation was true, wasn't it? The situation is somewhat awkward nonetheless. I have not been observed sustaining myself for many decades. I have to say I'm a trifle embarrassed. Anyway, I have concluded my inquiries concerning your blackmailer. I see. Please excuse my agitated state. Under normal circumstances, I wouldn't let anyone see me in this condition. I must confess I have not put an end to the blackmail, my lady. Unfortunately, I could not bring myself to do it. I'm so disappointed in you, Jonathan. I didn't expect this from you. Lady Ashbury, you yourself admitted how ridiculous the sum of money was. I can assure you it was all used for charitable ends. Well, you were full of surprises, aren't you, Jonathan? All right? Say I trust you. But you will still pay the ransom. That is only fair. After all, it was you who failed to bring this problem to a satisfactory conclusion. I believe I could agree to that. And since a lady always keeps her promises, I will now answer any questions you may have. <laughs> I don't understand. Why was I created and then left for dead? That is a question only the one who made you can answer. It's not normal practice. I doubt even if you find him, he will answer you, considering how cruelly he treated you. So me being a vampire could have been a mistake? I very much doubt it, Jonathan. Contrary to the legends, it is not as simple to make another vampire by just biting someone. I'd like to avoid creating another vampire by mistake anyway. Tell me, how is it done? <sighs> the process is dangerous. It could even kill your potential progeny. If you did decide to sire an offspring, they must drink of your blood, Jonathan. Hmm. Well, that definitely means that was not a mistake turning me into the vampire. I've been hearing a voice talking in my head. Is this some kind of insanity? It feels like the voice of the vampire that created me. Hush. Tell no one this. 
It would be unwise to talk of such things amongst British immortals. Speak no more of your maker. How could this cause offense? Only the powerful immortals can mentally call to their progeny. No vampire or hunter will sleep easy knowing that an unidentified elder is stalking the streets of London. Excuse my forwardness, but are you my maker? No. Goodness, no. Only a foolish immortal would create a progeny without taking precaution, and I'm no fool. A vampire? Is that what I am? What we are? Such a crude word, defined by penny dreadfuls and drunken hacks. No. You are now an echo, and that you shall remain. Are you an Ekon too? Yes, I am. We are the closest thing to what man refers to as vampires. Forget what you think you know about us. So we are Ekons. How can I identify us amongst other vampires? How to put it? All Ekon are vampires. But all vampires are not Ekon. We are a... Uh, but a branch of the immortal tree. Why did you save me in the canning factory? I could hardly stand by and watch such a promising young blood as yourself be torn to shreds by some gutter scowl. William Bishop wasn't the vampire that created me then. No, Jonathan. Whatever their strength and demeanor, Skulls are the progeny of careless vampires. It cannot be the other way round. What type of vampire is a Skull? Not a true vampire. The deformed offspring of lesser vampires. It is a shame these creatures run wild, slaves to their baser instincts. This is all very confusing. <laughs> Why does Dr. Swansea allow you to feed on the patients of the hospital? Dr. Swansea is a good and compassionate man. He is trying to find a solution for our... hunger. Until that happens, he is clever enough to understand that I only feed upon the dying. What do you know about this Brotherhood of St. Paul's Stole? The Brotherhood is well known amongst London Vampire Society. As long as our kind is discreet, and as long as they do not interfere, we have come to a mutual understanding. And no one suspected you of the murders? As you well know, suspicion has recently fallen on me of killing for pleasure. But you have my word, Jonathan. I take no pleasure in taking a life. I know this is beyond the pale, but may I inquire your age? Really? And I thought you were gentlemen. If you must know, I'm 27. I've been 27 for a long time now, and 27 I shall remain. So they don't age. I wonder if that means that their hair doesn't grow. So if like if Jonathan shaved his beard off if it wouldn't grow back. Interesting. Very well. But I believe there is more to this than you are saying. A lady has to have some secrets. And who bestowed upon you this eternal youth? My maker. He left this isle a long time ago. When I awoke, changed, I was chased and attacked by vampire hunters. Prepared and well trained. Though I can't be certain, more than likely it was the once glorious guard of Prewen. Once glorious, but still dangerous. They have seen better days, but all fanatics are dangerous. You would be wise to stay clear. 
They are sworn to destroy our kind. You make them sound like some sort of cult. More a society, and like all the best ones, a secret society. I thought them almost gone, but it seemed they have been recruiting. Gonna have to put a stop to that. I've been away from London and England for three years. This isn't the city I remember. Things have gone from bad to worse here, Jonathan. I've lived in this city for a long time, and I've never seen it like this. The Spanish flu has hit London that bad. Yes, but it's not just that. I've heard things. Things I've not heard for a very, very long time. There are whispers in the shadows. Something far worse than the Spanish flu is here in the city. What is it you fear? Fear has long since flown this form. But there is something malevolent circling us. I feel fear is merely waiting in the wings. Are there many vampires here in London? Immortals are of a rare breed, and we often tend to hide. But you may occasionally meet some of us at night. Do you know any of them? Have you an idea of the identity of the vampire who attacked me? You mean your maker? No, Jonathan, I have no clue. But I fear he or she is as careless as cruel. To let you discover your new condition by yourself. What do you mean? Every now and then, you may discover an immortal in the deep of the night. But we are a rare and reclusive breed. Our progeny is almost never accidental. Will they all be as affable as you, my lady? I do not see why not. But remember, even the shark smiles before he bites. That sounds like a lesson from experience. Vampire politics are as intricate and sometimes tedious as a game of chess in a gentleman's club. I've learned from experience it is best to decline to play. Hmm. I bid you farewell. For now, my lady. I must quickly analyze the blood I took from Nurse Crane's patient. Let's go uh, back to the office here real quick. Disgust on every street corner. The daily routine. Dear brothers, I must now draw your attention to a very important point. Use of garlic as a protection against vampires. Let's be crystal clear on the subject. Garlic will never protect you against those creatures. No matter how fresh, how strong, and how smelly, garlic is totally useless as a defense. I can never say enough how damaging that novel of Bram Stoker has been. Yes, of course, population of Slavic countries place garlic cloves in coffin coffins. Yes, of course, inhabitants of Santorini Island hang garlic on their windows. There would be so much to write about this place and someday soon. I hope to go back to this island to further explore its occult tradition. But that is not to protect the living from the devil, it is to tell the dead that they are aware of their malevolence. It is a symbol, nothing more and nothing less. So please, by all means, yes, wear garlic, show garlic, hang garlic, and tell the shadows that you are not afraid. But if you are looking for supernatural protection, you will have to search much deeper into the forgotten secrets of the occult tradition. For here is the truth, my fellow brothers. Garlic does not repel vampire but all the fresh plants will hurt them. It is as if their body could not stand the presence of botanical elements. I have seen an enraged vulp flee when whacked with a rose. Yes, a simple rose. I have witnessed a violent echon fall down and beg for mercy when struck by a wooden stake. I don't know why it is so effective and I would give my left arm to find the answer to that mystery, but the truth remains nonetheless. Nevertheless, vampires are very sensitive to fresh herbs, plants, and woods. Hmm. Interesting. Excuse me. Alright. 
So I don't have to analyze it, but... See if these are refilled here. No, not yet. Okay. Nope, that has. There we go. Okay, so I found something that will increase my stamina regen. Nice. Razvan Vasily was infected by Spanish flu, but also has the highly unstable blood of the Skulls. Is the London vampire epidemic transmitted through the flu? I should talk to Dr. Swansea about it. My recent trip to Whitechapel proved to me how desperate the situation is for our Londoners, and how they all must cope with this threat the best way they can. Causes and effects seem irredeemably intertwined. Dorothy Crane chose to steal and blackmail to gather enough money to illegally heal the poor, but I also saw her desperately try to save a dying patient in her rudimentary dispensary. In the end, we both failed saving the poor man, but I am now convinced the Spanish flu must be linked to the vampire, vampire epidemic, for my analysis of Razvan's blood revealed the same highly unstable blood I have already observed on William Bishop. I should report all of these events to Dr. Swansea and ask for his medical and vampire expertise. So now we're in Chapter 3. Whoops. So I've completed these three, so, and I've completed these in chapter one. Good, so here's chapter three. So I need to talk to Dr. Swansea. Let's go talk to Dr. Swansea real quick. Evening, Edgar. Could I get your professional opinion? Please speak, but I have something important to tell you. This strain of flu, it's very different from the one I saw in Europe. It's downright peculiar. Really? What makes you say that? I've just looked at the blood of one of our recently deceased. I see. Do you have anything more to go on? This disease spreads and looks like the Spanish flu, but its effects differ greatly. The London strain is different from the continental one. 
This is very interesting. Did you find something else? Yes. Unlike the flu, the infected begin to show an increase in outwardly aggressive behavior. More than simple agitation. Once docile people become violent. You mean like rabies? Is there a chance we could create a vaccine, Jonathan, like Pasteur? By the stove, that would be smashing. There's a lot we're not seeing here, but it is spreading, and quickly. If we don't act, the whole city could be lost. But Jonathan, we've a fantastic opportunity sitting right here in front of us. A weapon of choice. What on earth do you mean? Why you, my dear boy? With your expertise and your blood, we could isolate the properties that course through your veins. Think about the possibilities. But the risk of infection using vampire blood could compound the situation. I know, but your blood now carries remarkable regenerative properties. With our minds and your blood, there's nothing we couldn't cure. We'll discuss this more later. Thank you for your time. No, thank you, Jonathan. But as I said, I needed to talk to you. I have some rather bad news. Yes? I'm afraid it's your sister. My sister? She's to be buried this evening at Whitechapel Cemetery. Your mother published the obituary this morning. I see. I'm sorry, Jonathan. Please accept my condolences. to attend my sister's funeral. It's locked, all right. I wonder if I get a key to these things. Okay. So I need to go to the cemetery anyway. Eh, okay, good deal. Alright, well, I'm gonna go ahead and stop. We've been recording for a little over 30 minutes, so I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, hit the notification bell and the subscribe button, please, so you'll know when I put new content out. And I will bid you a good day. Thanks for watching.